Good morning. Happy uh, 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. Happy Reformation Day. Happy Halloween. I hope you remember today the 95 Reeses, excuse me, the 95 Theses. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. Uh, and welcome here to Bethlehem for our uh, Commitment Sunday and for our first annual Fiddling Flannel Fallback Festival. We are glad you are here on this very busy Sunday. A few notes about our service today uh, that you should be aware of. Uh, rather than have the announcements towards the end of the service, we will do the announcements before the prayers. Uh, during the time we normally reserve for announcements, I will invite uh, folks gathered online and gathered in person to consider uh, prayerfully discern their uh, commitment uh, to the ministry here at Bethlehem in the coming year. Uh, I, we really strongly, strongly invite you to uh, email your pledge uh, to BethlehemPledge at gmail.com because Barbara cannot be with us in person today, so it makes it easier for her uh, to keep track of the pledges as they come in. Again, that's uh, BethlehemPledge at gmail.com, and don't worry, I will say this again uh, when we get to that point in the service. Um, for those who email in, um, please know that if you still desire in this time of prayer and discernment to bring forth your pledge to the altar, uh, we have forms in the back to do so. Uh, you, if you've emailed your pledge, you do not need to put an, announce, an amount on this paper. You can simply write that you have emailed it in, um, but you can still share in the act of uh, bringing up your pledge, and we will invite you to put it on the altar uh, face down as you are able, if that is something you choose to do. Uh, for those who are gathered here in person, uh, there are worship materials in the back uh, on the table in the narthex. Please note that there is a bluegrass booklet there. If you haven't picked that up, there is also a bulletin um, and our sign-in sheet. Um, please check those out, especially since today is a bluegrass service, so you can follow along. Those are in the back on the narthex, uh, on the table in the narthex. Um, take a moment, share a word of greeting with one another for those gathered here and for those on Facebook, please post a greeting, a like, a love, a laugh, a comment of greeting with one another as we gather together uh, in worship this morning. For those gathered online, worship materials were sent out on Friday uh, to our email list, and they were also posted on Facebook, um, where they can be found uh, below our video this morning. Uh, if you would like to join our email list, please send your contact information to office at BethlehemSturbridge.org. Again, that's office at BethlehemSturbridge.org to uh, receive the worship materials each week and to receive our e-news with some of the ministry happenings and community-related events uh, going on here at Bethlehem and on our surrounding community. Uh, for announcements this week, uh, next week is All Saints Sunday, so if there is someone who has died in the past year that you would like lifted up in the service next week, please send their name to office at BethlehemSturbridge.org. Again, that's office, excuse me, at BethlehemSturbridge.org. Uh, please note uh, there, is new, there will be new links for virtual Sunday school in the e-news this week as well on Facebook. Uh, please note that the coat closet that Holy Trinity in Southbridge hosts every year is now open and accepting donations. Um, you can drop those off there on Saturdays. And of course, after we uh, make our commitments this morning, we will invite you to go out and enjoy our first annual uh, Fiddling Flannel Fallback Festival. I challenge you to say that five times fast. Um, we have games and we'll have a campfire out in the yard with s'mores. We will have apple crisp and uh, beverages in uh, Klein Hall. Feel free to go between the two. Um, we are really looking forward to it and uh, well done all of you who have dressed for the occasion. Um, really awesome and we're hoping those people don't run quite off quite, you know, after service we would love to get a picture with everyone. So. Um, 
thank you for uh, addressing the part and uh, we look forward to some celebration after the service. Are there any other announcements this morning? I will say thank you to all who contributed last week uh, to Cathedral in the Night. Um, we had a great group go up and able to put together meals um, and provide a ton of clothing and sleeping bags. Uh, and they really were grateful. And I was, the clothing went so quickly. I mean, it was gone within five minutes. So it's certainly appreciated and needed, uh, especially as the winter months come. So. Uh, uh, again, thank you uh, to everyone who made donations or to help prepare food and to those who actually who came up and uh, traveled out to Northampton for Cathedral in the Night. Um, anything about Food Share? Keep bringing more food. Keep bringing food in for Food Share. Um, it will be, we can leave it in the closet here at the church and uh, we'll be dropped off later on. Mel. Um, the youth will be at the closet on Saturday, this coming Saturday in the morning. So if you want to come to the closet next Saturday um, to help out in the morning time, that's another announcement. And then I have some prayers when you're ready for those. Sure. Yeah, uh, the, our youth will be at Bethlehem's closet next Saturday. Um, they should be in touch with you, Mel, if they're coming. Or Heather. Or Heather, okay. Uh, anyone who is interested in assisting at the closet, um, please contact Heather Miranda, um, particularly the youth. Are there any other announcements from either here at the congregation or online? Mike. Great, yeah, information session about the Habitat build happening in Surbridge. Um, I'll try and get that in the e-news to make sure people have the date and time. Uh, we think seventh, the 17th from 5.30 to 7.30 here in Klein Hall. Um, so we uh, hope you can come out for that as well. Not seeing any other announcements. Uh, we will continue with our uh, prayer request prayer requests for, uh, in which we always start our services, uh, both in person and online. Um, so for what uh, joys and concerns do we have this morning? Mike? Um, prayers for the family of Ken Goodman. He passed away last week. Prayers for the family of, uh, of Ken Goodman and all who loved Ken um, as they work through their grief, for sure. Beth? Prayers for the Brusu family who are dealing with COVID right now, of course, and all who are struggling with COVID um, during these days. Carol. Prayers for your niece's husband, Bob, who's battling COVID, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, prayers for the whole family and those who uh, love and care for them um, in this time of grief and sadness as they await his death. Mike. Prayers for Al. He's in the hospital right now, suffering with all that. Oh, prayers for Al. And hopefully the doctors and nurses and all who care for him can help resolve the gallbladder issues, for sure. And prayers for you, Mike. Mel. We have uh, prayers from, uh, of thanksgiving from Beth. Uh, it, Rob is improving at home, so uh, you know, being thankful for that, as well as it's their 50th anniversary today. Wow, prayers of thanksgiving for Rob being home and for improving, and then we give, uh, we give thanks for their 50th wedding anniversary and 
uh, we rejoice with them on such a milestone event. What other prayer requests this morning? Terry? Great. We rejoice in uh, permanent employment uh, for David. Any other prayers of joy or concern this morning? <laughs> That's a prayer. I'll take that as a prayer of joy. Mel. Mel. Prayers for the Green family as they mourn Judy's death, for sure. Seeing no other prayer requests, uh, we begin our service this morning with our entrance hymn, Light into the World, Hope for a New Day. I'll invite you to please stand as you are able. to share in the presence of God with celebration. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our gathering hymn, A Mighty Fortress, ELW 505 in your red hymnal, or can be found in your worship materials.
from above and for our salvation. For peace in the whole world and the unity of all nations. the children hungry or neglected in every nation. For those who have no bread and those who find no joy. For those who came before us and now are in your glory. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now may the Lord of peace give you peace at all times and in all ways. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We can continue this morning with our readings from Scripture. You may be seated. Our first reading today is from Jeremiah chapter 31. 
The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I, put, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall, know, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We have a song... Our psalm today is Psalm 46 that we will read responsively. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river. God is in the midst of this city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdom shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the work of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold, the one who makes war to cease in all the world who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shield with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for, though, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets the righteousness of God through the faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove that at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is exalted. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works, prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Stand as you are able. Lord, to whom shall we go? You are gracious and merciful. Lord, to whom shall we go?
the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will make me free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Y'all look great in your flannel, by the way. <laughs> so don't you, Pastor. Thank you. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Where do you feel the most free? Where is it that you feel unbound from the burdens and challenges, challenges of the world? Where is it that you find an opportunity to catch your breath? Is it a certain place? Is it with certain people? Is it both? So I really want to know the answer to these questions, so take a minute, if you are willing, if you are online, put something in the comments section, or if you're gathered here at Bethlehem, please feel free to shout out an answer, if the spirit so moves you. At home with my wife. At home with your wife. Great answer, Mike. <laughs> At home with my wife. There we go, Pat. <laughs> I'll be sure to send, up, send along the YouTube recording to Danielle. <laughs> we're, we're all set, <laughs> We can watch football this afternoon without any problem. In the woods. In the woods. <laughs> On a hike. With my husband. With her husband. <laughs> oh, I'm sensing a trend. Here at church. Here at church. Jen. In the shower with the doors locked. Yeah. It's probably just related to all moms everywhere. <laughs> Mel. I have one from Beth at the ocean. At the ocean. Love it. Love it. In my garden. In the garden. Yeah. Peaceful. Fly fishing. Fly fishing. Camp front porch, yes. She didn't own her camp front porch with her friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Lovers by the Sea. By the Sea. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for your. What? Oh. <laughs> Oh, just before it gets started. Okay. It's, that's the most, because I'm assuming it gets less relaxing as the game starts. It gets less relaxing after that moment. Okay. The deep breath before the plunge. Thank you for sharing. Now, it is my hope that you've all been able to find ways to share in these experiences that you have lifted up, especially during a time where we seem to need more renewal and refreshment than we have before. And as I think about all that you have said, I'm reminded of a lot of similarities in the ways that I seek my own renewal. Camp, kayaking, and a few weeks ago, I got the opportunity to hike through the valley in the Columbia River Gorge. 
surrounded by moss-covered trees and walking through the valley past waterfall upon waterfall upon waterfall. If you're on Facebook, you probably saw the pictures. It honestly felt like I was in Fern Gully. I mean, if you know the movie, walking through a new and uh, unseen place. And the best way that I can describe it is that there was a freedom there, freedom for the body in exploring a new place and going on adventure and moving and taking steps and looking to see parts of God crea God's creation that I have not seen before. But also there was freedom for the soul, an opportunity to take a breath and soak in a new part of what I had yet to experience, walking amidst the trees, finding tiny lizards on the path, feeling the cool breeze come down through the valley in the midst of the mountains that lay by the Columbia River. These, these moments that you have all lifted up are sacred and holy moments, moments that everyone deserves and certainly needs, but moments that not everyone has the availability or the opportunity to take. There is privilege present in these moments. Privilege that, that comes with our ability and capacity and resources to travel and immerse oneself in opportunities for, these, for rest and renewal. We know all too well that those we see in our communities, some at the closet, some in our town, some in our state and across the country, we know that there's a daily struggle that many experience both here and abroad, where it, the efforts they make day by day are not for respite or relief or freedom to breathe. Rather, they are for simply survival. And rather than experiencing the freedom that such renewal brings, there are those who are continuously beat down by the world we live in, struggling under systems that too often leave them behind. Their efforts are focused purely in survival mode. And can you imagine what that is like? It surely leaves folks exhausted and frustrated and tired and probably more often than not hopeless. We are bearing witness to the struggles of these systems and what that brings to our world today, to our country, to our towns, to our community. As we follow the news in Washington these days, as folks on both sides who make hundreds of thousands of dollars quarrel and nitpick and decide the fate of legislation that will have less of an impact on them than those on who they profess to represent. We have seen opportunities gone by the wayside as negotiations take place, as we see the loss of potential for universal parental leave, the cutting of a wealth tax, all for the sake of a game that only have a few, that only a few get a chance to play. Though unlike games, the impact of these decisions are very, very real. Now, outside of this Washington discourse, we have also seen this word freedom tossed around in daily news cycles and local public discourse. It seems to have become a buzzword, so to speak, at times often being used by some who steadfastly and resolutely pursue, pursue goals that are more centered on the individual than the community. For better or for worse, it has become a crutch of sorts used to justify behavior that highlights the increased individualistic nature of our society and culture while leaving the pursuit of the collective good in the dust, so to speak. Now, this is not the freedom I want to talk about today, nor is it the type of freedom I think uh, worth, worth reflecting on in this particular moment. Rather, on this Reformation Sunday, as we think about our freedom for renewal and refreshment, I'll invite us to turn our attention to the gospel lesson and to Martin Luther's work, A Freedom of a Christian. Now, in our gospel lesson today, we hear about the liberation that comes to us through Christ. 
For if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. The freedom that we are talking about here is the freedom that comes to us from the cross, and it is the freedom from the bondage of sin. It is the ultimate liberation story, the ultimate story of freedom, one that ensures our salvation and removes that burden from our shoulders. But in the spirit of a good infomercial, but wait, there's more. We see with our redemption assured that we are now reminded of our duty through the words that come to us from Martin Luther. A Christian is a perfectly free Lord of all, subject to none. A Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject of all, subject to all. Christ's death and resurrection sets us free to be sure, but it also calls us into the service of one another. It's a freedom unlike any other we may find in this world. One that the world had not known before the Easter story. And through that story, we find that it is at the cross that our liberation and commitment to serve one another comes together. The two cannot be separated. Luther's freedom of a Christian speaks to the heart of the mission that we are called into, which certainly includes fighting against the injustices of the world that keeps folks shackled to desperation and despair, un and unable to find respite a renewal, or an opportunity to take a breath. As we reflect on all of this, the Psalms struck me in a different way this week, and it reminded me of the road that we've been on, a rocky one at that, an opportunity where we've had to change the way we've had to find our own rest and renewal, but certainly has affected those who have the least the most. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. The last couple of years the mountains have shaken, and the seas have been stormy. Waters have been raging, complete with white caps and all. Life has not been easy, and it certainly has been harder for some than others. Our country, the world, the place we live and call home, the pandemic has exposed flaws in our world, brought them into the light, shown inequality for what it is, laid bare the problem and imbalance of wealth that comes to the few at the expense of the many. A few weeks ago, I spoke about the trip to Portland and that while we were exploring the city, we came across these homeless tent cities. So in the midst of our refreshment and renewal, we were again confronted with the inequality and an imbalance that is the world today. Now, when we think about our freedom to seek those things, we are reminded that the freedom that comes to a, the cross, the redemption that comes with it, does not place its focus on the individual, but it is, as Luther says, a call to service, a call to care for the collective, a call to stand for the good of the community, a call to be together with one another and to stand against the forces of the world that rock the seas and shake the mountains stand against the forces that would violate the truth that comes to us through the cross. For surely we are created, built for, and called to be in community together, whether the seas are stormy or called, created to be a voice of liberation for those who are in need of it. So dear siblings, on this Sunday where we commemorate the Reformation, the Sunday where we make a commitment and discern the time, talents, and treasures that we will bring to bear for the sake of the body of Christ. I would invite you to pray and think and discern about how you might be a liberating force for others, 
How might your gifts be used to strengthen and support the body of Christ here in this place and out in our community where there is still so much work to be done? We know that our Redeemer lives and that the cross redeems us, for we are called God's beloved. Now, living into that new freedom, let us go forth into the world and allow for the Spirit to work through us so that our dear siblings may experience the power of God's love and the gifts we have been called to share in this world. We know that the world is weary, dear siblings, and that those who struggle, those who are claimed children of God just as we are, deserve the opportunity for respite and rest, a chance to take a deep breath, a chance to do more than fight just to survive, a chance to flourish and thrive. The gifts we offer, the gifts that are God-given, the gifts we bring to the table can be that liberating force. The freedom that Martin Luther the freedom that Martin Luther is talking about when he calls us to be of service to all. Amen. We continue this morning with our hymn of the day, which, will, which is where charity and love prevail can be found in your ELW, your red hymnal, number 359, or in your worship materials.
Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. We pray for all who long for a word of truth and for the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence, persistence and hope. Hear us, O God. We pray, we pray for your creation, for mountains, rivers, streams, cities, homesteads, and neighborhoods. Write in our hearts a new love and care for creation. Give us the will to curb wasteful habits and to hold accountable those who neglect the vulnerable. Hear us, O God. Our mercy is great. Lord of the people, you made us in your image and you call us good. Silence voices of shame and hatred, including the ones in our own heads, and inspire us to love ourselves and one another the way you so desperately, passionately, and deeply love us. Teach us a fondness and delight for our bodies as we are called to live in them, in all of their holy, messy, fabulous glory. Teach us to love neighbors who live in different skin, to love intelligences and abilities of all kinds, and loving kindness most of all. Make us bold in our proclamation that the lives, loves, and gifts of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, ace, queer, intersex, native, black, brown, incarcerated, disabled, and migrant people matter to you. And so they matter to all of us, manifest in both word and deed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who aspire to public office and for all who will vote on Tuesday at local polling places. Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern so that communities of justice and, may, and peace may thrive. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord, we pray for all who are suffering from COVID-19. Be present with those who continue to suffer long-term symptoms. Comfort those who have lost loved ones. Empower and give courage to the medical professionals providing care at the risk of their own health. And finally, strengthen those who are working, who are working to distribute a vaccine so that we may see an end to this pandemic. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for all who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit. We pray especially today for Al, for Janet, for the family and friends of Ken Goodman, for the Brusso family, for a peaceful passing for Bob and for his family and friends. and for the family and friends of Judy Green. Strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, nursing homes, and recovery centers to be holy spaces of renewal that all might live the abundant life you intend. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for all who seek to grow in faith and love of you. Guide teaching and learning in confirmation, small groups, Sunday school, youth groups, schools, seminaries, and universities. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, today we come to you with rejoicing prayers for the life and love of Rob and Beth on their 50th wedding anniversary, for Rob's improving health at home, and we pray for David's permanent employment and the joy that that brings to him. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us, who dwell in your holy habitation. Give us courage through their example to challenge unjust systems and work toward life-giving reformation. Hear us, O God. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life.
Jesus came and stood among the disciples and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace in whichever way you are comfortable. If you are gathered here in this place and if you are on Facebook, a like, a love, a laugh, or a comment of peace with one another. Remembering God's overflowing new life among us, let us gather our tithes and offerings. There are multiple ways to give your offering this morning. You can visit our website, www.bethlehemsturbridge.org, and you can uh, visit the bottom of the homepage where you can find a link to our PayPal account. It is there you can make your offering with your debit or credit card or your own personal PayPal account. The second is that you can mail your offering to the church, Bethlehem Lutheran Church, 345 Main Street, Sturbridge, Massachusetts, 01566. And you can also leave your offering for those who are gathered here in this place on the table out in the narthex upon departure. And for those of you who are worshiping with us on Facebook Live this morning, now is the time to have your bread or wine or bread or grape juice uh, ready for communion. Let us enter into a time of prayerful meditation as we make our offering to God. called The Sound of Your Voice by Stephen Curtis Atma. I'm going to dedicate that to my friend Ken Goodman. Uh, Ken was aptly named. Ken means kind. Ken was a good man. There's a mockingbird singing outside my window. There's a little girl calling my name. gentle breeze whispering stories and secrets to the branches of the old and old tree, and I hear your voice, it's the sound of your voice. God, you know how much I wish I could just hear you say the words, answer all the questions. But until I hear you speak, will you help me hear the songs you're singing over all this noise? I will be listening for the sound of your voice. There's a little boy's eyes. Looking up from a postcard, he's asking me, will you show me love? I hear your voice. It's the sound of your voice. And there's a woman who's crying, her hope is dying, and a friend whispers, you're not alone. And I hear your voice. It's the sound of your voice. God, you know how much I wish I could just hear you say the words, answer all the questions everybody's asking. But until I hear you speak, Help me hear the song you're singing over all this noise. I will be listening to the sound of your voice. It's the sound of your voice.
and I'll close my eyes for a moment, and when I open them again, you'll be standing there, face to face, and I'll hear your voice. It's the sound of your voice. Cause you know how much I wish I could just hear you say the word. Answer all the questions everybody's asking. But until I hear you speak, will you help me hear the song you're singing over all this noise? I will be listening to the sound. Please stand as you are able. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us with this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us lift up our hearts as well as our hands to God in heaven. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, holy, 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 O then in the highest heaven, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, who was and is and is to come. Almighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his, his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord and unite the wills of all who share the heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread as we our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. For those gathered here at Bethlehem, we practice an open table. We invite all to come to the feast that has been prepared for us. All are welcome to come forward and share in this meal together. For those gathered here, you may come forward from the center aisle and come up towards the baptismal font. You will receive a wafer from me, and then I will invite you to either intinct in the wine on the right or in the grape juice on the left. For those who are in need of a gluten-free option, please make that known to me as you come forward. Also, for those who are looking for a blessing instead of communion, please 
come forward with your arms crossed on your shoulders. For those gathered online this morning on Facebook Live, please share in communion with those of you who are gathered at home using the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your own name we pray. Amen. God, we have come to this time in our service as we pray and discern uh, for the year ahead uh, to make our uh, commitments um, of time, talent, and treasures uh, to one another and uh, to the community in which we live. And so as we talked about before, uh, I will encourage you to make uh, your pledge uh, online uh, Email pledge, uh, Bethlehem pledge at gmail.com. Again, that's on the narthex for those who want to either write that uh, they have emailed their pledge and continue to bring it to the altar, um, or if it's challenging to uh, email your pledge. Um, you can use this as well and we will figure something out with that, but I would strongly invite you uh, to email your pledge to BethlehemPledge at gmail.com. Uh, for those who are gathered online, uh, there should be a slide up right time of the sermon and prayer, uh, I'll invite us uh, to pray, uh, take as long as you need, sit in this space uh, as you make your pledges, I will then invite you out uh, to begin our fall festival. Uh, we have food and beverages in Klein Hall, a uh, place to gather, we have a campfire, uh, we will have a fire outside with s'mores and yard games and all of that goodness, and I praise God that it stopped raining and uh, the sun is out. Thank you, Jesus. Um, let us pray. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, who in your self emptying love gathered up and reconciled all creation to the Father. Innumerable galaxies of the heavens worship you, creatures that grace the earth rejoice in you. All those in the deepest sea bow to you in adoration. As with them, we give you praise. Grant that we may cherish the earth, our home, and live in harmony with good, this good creation. Empower us to consider the ways we may share our gifts with one another and those who are in need of us. Give us the courage to bring our gifts to bear, to help free and liberate those 
who are suffering. And for all of this, we pray in your Son's holy name, as he lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. No. 